Hey guys, it's SJ. Welcome over again. I hope you're good. I'm excited here because we're going to talk about kids' books. Oh, how much do you read? Like more when you're a parent because you're just reading kids' books, <laughs> but never your own books. Um, these are the books I've had since I had Freddie some of these. He's my eldest, he's now 10, um, and I still don't mind reading them. That was my criteria for putting them on this list. Um, they're really, really good. So they're not all brand new ones, but I think that with kids' books, they just stand the test of time, don't they? And if you can get through reading them again and again and again, then it's a good sign. There are some brand new ones as well here, especially for, I'm just getting into that next stage of Finn starting to read for himself and Freddie reading a few of the more kind of tween books that you could also read to your younger kids. So I'm gonna do a giveaway again. You can win any four of these kids' books just by writing giveaway at the beginning of any comment you leave in the comment section below. At the end of the video, do be subscribed as well. Um, and last week I did the same list, it was like a Christmas gift guide for grown up books and so I will also announce the winner of that giveaway at the end of this video. If you would rather still re-enter to win the grown up ones, do so below, just write giveaway and then we can pick whether you want four kids books or three grown up books. So yeah, let me show you all our favourite, favourite, favourites. So I'm starting with my ultimate, which is The Book With No Pictures by BJ Novak, who I'm sure wrote a bit of The Office in America, I'm sure. He's a comedy writer, basically, and this is a kid's book that he wrote, which is so funny, and it's so smart, because it's basically perfect for Christmas morning if they opened it in their stocking, because the idea is, he says, grown-ups, how books work is grown-ups have to read everything I write down in this book, so your grown-up's gonna have to read it all, and then he goes through basically tricking you into saying really stupid stuff that the kids find absolutely hilarious, um, and then you sort of have these bits where it's like, this is, book is ridiculous, can I stop reading yet? And so they absolutely love it it's things like now it's time for me to sing you my favorite song and then you go a song do I really have to sing and then there's like silly song lyrics so the kids howl with laughter honestly they do laugh out loud at this book Finn took it to school and it got passed around like every single teacher because the kids all found it so so funny so a great one and genuinely from I would say up to like seven or eight even older they would really really enjoy this book and um, to get like grandparents reading out loud to them and being a bit silly in front of your kids get them interested in books oh my gosh i loved this book it's called rhinoceroses rhinoceros <laughs> it's not <laughs> It's called Rhinos Don't Eat Pancakes, which is a much better title. Um, and it's by Sarah Ogilvy and Anna Kemp. So they also wrote Dogs Don't Do Ballet, which I also have. Um, this was one of our all-time favourite books as well. And it's about a little pug. If you've got a pug who wants to be a ballerina, and it's that kind of, you know, yes, of course, you can be a ballerina, which is lovely. But this one is quite new to our edition. And oh my goodness, it actually made me want to cry a little bit because it's about this little girl, um, Daisy, who's eating breakfast and a rhino comes along. And this is Purple Rhino. And she's spending all this time with her Purple Rhino. And her, she's trying to tell her parents about this rhino and they're not really listening to her. So the kind of like story message in it is more about paying attention to your children. They get saying it in a minute, in a minute. And yeah, we'll look at the rhino later. And the rhino is real. So it's just a lesson again and a moral of the story to sit and really spend that time listening to everything your children tell you so it's a lovely one in that way the kids favorite that they always pick you know if we go on holiday or something i'll say pack a couple of books they always pick what's more scary um, and it's a choose the flap adventure so basically a little boy called johnny i think he is he goes on a trip through the um, jungle and then it's because it's scary animals it's all quite fun evelina loves this lifting the um, flaps so it's like which way should i go one way there's piranhas the other way there's an alligator which way should i go and he's basically getting chased through the jungle by something and he has to make all these decisions about which way to go to get safe and then there's a really funny twist at the end which i won't spoil for you <laughs> because I know this is as exciting as life's going to get this December. Um, so yeah, it's a really fun book though by Min Flight and Matt Hunt. So the, it's just a real crowd pleaser for the children. Happy Town. Has anyone got this one? So this is by the creators of Giraffes Can't Dance. But I feel like I never hear anyone else talk about this. And it's been my firm favourite. I remember reading this to Freddie. I'd come home from work. Um... And I'd always pick this one because it really like spoke to me a little bit. And I used to help me like sort through my feelings about work. So basically about a chimpanzee called Chutney. And um, he comes back, he goes traveling, he has all these experiences and um, comes back and he realizes that there's um, this, and he lives in Drabsville where everything's the same. No one has any, celebrates their differences and they're all kind of like dictated by this um, mayor. Um, and so he decides to change things and to grow a tree and to 
celebrate people's differences to paint their houses different colors to have fun together again and it's just a really lovely story about um it's about if you dare to let things free they will always flourish and it's just lovely 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 so it's a really nice message i really enjoy it and i always don't mind reading it which is again as i said the whole purpose of it because you're going to be reading these stories <laughs> many many times christmasy one father christmas needs a wee got to give it a shout out because yeah there's tons of good christmas books and i'll pop a list actually um on instagram or something of the christmas themed books that we love but this is a great one because it's just hilarious again kids love it it's about we father christmas is drinking all the drinks so it kind of does make you laugh because he's going you know to house to house and he's having like you know a number and it's numbers whereas it's like a number one he has one bun and number two so the kids also get some counting which is a good reason to pretend that I like reading this story about wee <laughs> and he drinks all these drinks and then he's desperate for a wee and tries to get home and it always just makes me laugh anyway <laughs> I've sunk that low that this makes me laugh but I do like having like Christmas themed books so I would love any more so let me know your favourite ones um, below and as you can tell we quite like a funny book here and um, it's nice to have the sort of meaningful ones but the funny ones I always think are just nice to get books outside of just bedtime um, and have more fun with them so for the older ones for the tweens I guess David Williams how does he write so many books it genuinely freaks me out and they're like it's another David Williams I'm like what is he doing um but we've got the world's worst they're brilliant they are so good this is something that Freddie who was quite a reluctant reader he got so into when the world's worst kids and then the world's worst teachers and now the world's worst parents they're disgusting they're such kids sense of humor but you can read these they're short stories as well so we've got the audio books actually which are brilliant um but we also read these like while they're having dinner or sometimes when they're in the bath or something like that um just as a way to sort of have a bit of a laugh together and i really like out of the novels if you're going to read to your kids this is a nice one for this time of year mr stink because it's about kindness so there's a little girl called chloe who has quite a tough time at school can you ever read those stories without getting sad and so she gets a bit bullied at school and then she takes mr stink who's a homeless man in their town everyone calls him mr stink and she kind of takes him under her wing a little bit and invites him to come and live with her hidden in her shed so it's an unlikely friendship story it's about kindness generosity it's about who people really are um and about not sticking up for yourself not listening to what other people think about you all those good stuff so i really like this one i have all his books and i think we've read all of them um, is when we've read a couple of times and I always really like it. So for reluctant readers, this series um, is by uh, Pamela Butchart, Butchart. Uh, she's won quite a few awards for this story. Um, and they're sort of big books, big writing with lots of illustrations in them. And this book, you might think that's a long book, but that's actually about four or five little mini stories in there. And all her books are like that. So it's almost like a chapter is a complete story. So it's really good for you young readers or reluctant older readers because it's quick and easy. And the stories are really good and it's about Izzy and her gang of pals and they're always getting themselves into scrapes and the topics of you know, things like baby aliens got my teacher and the spy who loves school dinners is really funny and we've got all of them but I love this one as a gift because it's <laughs> that's my tummy that's my stomach can you hear that <laughs> I got the loudest tummy rumble and when I went to uni the boy next door to me through my wall you used to say that he could hear my tummy rumbling <laughs> um <laughs> Um, so this one, I'm talking about uni, to we or not to we, which is all Shakespeare stories retold. Um, so it's got Hamlet, Macbeth, Midsummer Night's Dream and Romeo and Juliet retold by like Izzy and her friends. So it's kind of like a modern day version of what happens to them that, that follows along and mimics the Shakespeare tales. So a good one if you're kind of into literary stuff yourself. Um, I did Shakespeare at uni and I was obviously always very hungry. <laughs> And some new ones that I've got for them more, I am reading these to the kids, um, but hoping they would pick up themselves. A Kind of Spark, this is a kind of big it book at the moment that you've probably seen, but it's about a little girl who I feel she has something either like um, Asperger's or um, she's autistic, um, but it's written through her eyes. I've only just started it. Um, and what's lovely is seeing the world through her eyes um, not focusing on her differences, but her passion for, she gets obsessed with the witches, like the witch trials history and I love that I'm like oh my god I'm quite obsessed with that so I'm really excited to read that alongside Addy and talking about how people kind of persecuted the witches and I'm sure that's going to have lots of kind of 
interest for the children as well because it's kind of that mixture of real I love books as I said in the grown-up one where you're sort of learning something about real history alongside a novel so I've just started that and that could be a great one for a Christmas wish list Freddie read this during lockdown and it's there's a boy in the girls bathroom and again it's quite short but it's more for like a tween one it's set in America about a little boy Bradley who tells lies and he moves to a new school and it's about trying to fit into a new school but it's about shrugging off labels about yourself and it's about a teacher who believes in Bradley and manages to turn his life around through treating him differently treating him like a good person and seeing beyond what people say about him because he's a bit um seen as the bad kid of the school essentially so a really lovely lovely twist to a tale great for somebody starting kind of secondary like freddie's doing year six and they studied this last year during lockdown as part of his school education program his teacher read it for them actually and you could download a video of each chapter which was a really good choice um i think so a nice one and then my absolute dream book is called Break the Mold by Sinead Burke. So Sinead Burke is an Irish teacher and she is a little person so she's only like about four foot and she has something called acrondoplasia or something I'm not going to pronounce that right um, but this book is incredible it is a fit, uh, factual book it's about her life and her starting school and what happened to her as a little person but throughout it she's giving you these you know I'm not very good at reading like journaling with the children or affirmations and stuff like that all the time but you know I'm really into that this is just such an easy way of doing it so um you know to, to be curious to be kind and she says within it how she's overcome things um and how it's helped her um little phrases that have helped her so it's so much more engaging for the children because they're listening to someone else's story but taking in that lessons and she'll say things like who do, who is your biggest supporter who's your biggest fan uh, and then I could have this conversation with the kids so I was obsessed I loved it I love her um she's got an amazing TED talk as well so I'm a bit of an amazing fan girl of her now but this book is such a gorgeous gift for grandchildren for nieces and nephews anywhere about finding your place in the world for yourself buy it for yourself i hope you enjoyed that and now i'm going to pick the winner for last week's giveaway and then let you know how you can enter this week's giveaway so the winner of those three grown-up books or four kids books you can pick whichever list you would like to is either lorena or lorene dayden so congrats lorena or lorene i would say lorene but it might be lorena um i'm so happy that you won do get in touch, just email me. I will leave my email in the comments description bit below. Email me and we will chat about what books you would like. And again, don't forget to add giveaway at the beginning of your comment here to win either four of these kids' books or three of the grown-up books, whichever you would like to pick from. And yeah, let me know your favourite books from this list and from others that you have read for your own kids. Stay safe, stay home, stay well, take care, and I will see you on my next video. I've got a really fun one tomorrow and next week. What else am I doing next week? I can't remember. <laughs> See you later.